Welcome to the Revolution Church Podcast. listening to the Christy G podcast with me your host Christy G here I chat with some of my favorite humans on this dang planet we talk about music art nostalgia and lots lots more so sit back and enjoy this newest episode well hello Fun, random fact, straight off the bat, I have recorded my little intro here about a zillion times because I'm so freaking psyched about being back to podcasting, and it has been way too long. My old computer crashed, I got a new one, and I am ready to go. I have a list of awesome guests coming up, and I'm just really excited. So, with all that said, let's get into it. My guest this week is my amazing friend Jay Baker. This is the third time Jay's been on the show because he is one of my favorite humans and I love him. So I was like, heck yeah, we need to have you on the show as much as possible. And um, it's just really fun because his mother is Tammy Faye Baker. Now, I'm sure most of you at least heard of Tammy Faye Baker, but when I was little, I wanted to be like Tammy Faye Baker. I thought she was so fun. I could tell she was authentically herself and... There's like a life of a part of the party and I was just like, holy crap, I really love her. So years down the road when I got to be friends with Jay, I was just like, tell me everything there is to know about your mother. <laughs> um, yeah, and in this crazy small world, Hollywood made a movie called The Eyes of Tammy Faye Baker starring Jessica Chastain and Andrew Garfield who play Jay's parents. And I went and saw it last week. It is so good and I totally, totally, totally think you guys should watch it like in my opinion it's Oscar worthy Um, especially Jessica's uh, role in it she did such a good job like I was blown away of how well she did I mean she's amazing in everything but wow her as Tammy was really really great Um, yeah but also just thinking what would that be like to have a movie made about your parents like I cannot even imagine that's got to be a wild wild ride so That's what we're going to talk about today with Jay. His thoughts on the film, what's it like, like kind of experiencing it all, how the the movie differs and is the same from his real life story, all that good stuff. I am very, very excited and again, just super, super psyched to be back to podcasting and I'm just just excited. (laughs) I said that a lot, (laughs) Um, but I'm really pumped and I could just keep talking about that. But without further ado, let's get into this conversation with my amazing friend, Jay Baker. Hi, Jay. (laughs) (laughs) Hello. I am a scatterbrain, as always. Um, Yeah, so I have Jay here for the third time. Um, You're like, you know, on Saturday Night Live, they have the five-time host club. You're my uh, third three times on the podcast club. You're the only one so far. Oh, so far, wow. I'm an honored, honored guest. That's right. I always, I always tell my mom because she like, loves our episodes. I was like, we should have a, a Christy G and Jay Baker show. We could just like ramble yeah. on about all kinds of things. It'd be fun. All sorts of stuff. <laughs> well, many people are very um, intrigued by this movie. You may have heard of it. It's called The Eyes of Tampa yeah. Bay. Um, I feel like maybe you know about it. But, um, I know about it. Yeah, yeah. I thought we would uh, talk about it a little. Okay. Um, yeah. I went and saw it yesterday. Took myself on a little, a little, a little date to the movies, and um, it had me feeling so many things on all kinds of levels. I was not anticipating, but it was really well done. Like I was very surprised on how, like, well she played your mom. Amazing. Yeah. Jessica Chastain, by the way, people who don't know. Yeah, Jessica Chastain oh. and Andrew Garfield is my yes. dad. Yes, he also. I have a, I have some questions about hair and makeup as far as he's concerned. Did they add like little cheek fillers for him? To I make... think they did. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I was never on the site. Oh. I mean, I think I think definitely when he got on the set. I mean, not the site, the set. Um, yeah. 
I think when he gets older, they definitely yeah, do. Yeah, it was so cool. I was like, wow, he like really looked like your dad. It was amazing. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird though too because you also like there's a part of you is like, damn man, you yeah. had to add all that stuff so to make them look like they had <laughs> cheeks. <laughs> I know, aw, cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, your mom like her playing your mom must have been a blast. Well, and it was well, it's weird because, I mean, just. Physically, she doesn't look like my mom mm-hmm. at all in real life. Yeah. You know, so it's so like I, you know, when people had always asked me, like, who would you like to play your mom? You know, she never came to my mind because right? I never thought she looked like my mom. You know, mm-hmm. um, I always thought, um, oh, what was, what was the girl's name? She was she was married to Heath Ledger. Oh, um, you know oh, who I'm talking about? Yes, my brain. I, I see her in my head right now. Michelle yeah, Williams. I see her too. Yeah, Michelle Williams. Yeah. So that was always my top pick. For, mm-hmm. I could totally for see some, that. For a person to play my mom. I think she would have done a good job. Yeah. Um, and then maybe the, uh, maybe the, who's that girl, you know? Um, oh, Zoe Deschanel, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought her. maybe she could have also done a job, you know, <laughs> done a good job. But those were my top picks, you know? Yeah. So when I heard Jessica Chastain was doing it, I was like, this is so bizarre. And, um, <laughs> but yeah, she... You know, she did the transformation. Yeah, she nailed it. I mean, it's crazy to hear that she spent seven hours in makeup chairs sometimes, but I'm guessing that's for like all the plastics and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think my mom ever spent that long doing her makeup. <laughs> oh my god! And it's funny to think like they hired like this whole makeup crew yeah. and all these people, you know, and, and it's like <laughs> my mom bought most of her makeup at like the drugstore, yeah, you know. So totally. it's really funny just to think about like. Like all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's just the, the silly stuff. And and I, and then when I talked to Andrew about playing my dad on the phone, um, you know, I didn't realize he was British. Yeah. I'd seen him in a ton of movies, but I, you know, he usually uses an English accent. I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a, 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 an American accent. Mm-hmm. So that was that was really surreal as well. It's amazing. He them as the. Okay, I have to also just say, if you haven't seen the movie, listeners, there's going to be a lot of spoiler alerts, so watch the dang movie. Because we're just going to go on and on here. But um, them as the younger version of themselves was so cute. Yeah. Like, it was so, so cute. And, like, in the theater, like, there were, like, little giggles, like, when they were, like, making out on the couch. Right, right. <laughs> it was just so cute. And it's funny because I know I, I mentioned this to you, but watching it through the lens as your friend... Like right. I was, kind of, I feel like I was watching it and trying to take in what you would be thinking during watching it for yourself. And I was like, oh my God, I can't imagine like seeing my parents making out on this. Like, uh, <laughs> but, but, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, they do. I mean, you know, it's funny cause it was one of those things where, because I saw it the first time I saw it, I saw it in California, mm-hmm. um, with Pete yeah. and in a big, you know, screening area in the, at the studio. And it was just like me and Pete. I mean, literally no one else was in the Mm. theater. So yeah, it was, it's, it was, it was different. I, I definitely think my favorite like acting part of the film takes place then like takes place right when they meet and when they're at school. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think the reason is because I think I have my emotions are detached yeah. from that time, mm. you know, so there's not a lot of trauma for me That's in that. True. And yeah. it's interesting to see a recreation of your parents meeting yeah. and your recreation of your mom as a little girl. And uh, so that was that was really uh, that was kind of cool to see because I'd heard, you know, I'd heard stories. Yeah. You know, my parents told me about meeting and stuff like that and how they used to sit in the park and across the street from the school and, you know I mean? Cause that wasn't the actual school, but, mm. um, but I've been to the, to North central Bible college a few times. So that was, that was really interesting. I, I wonder if like people at North central Bible college are even allowed to see the movie. Oh, really? Is it really strict? <laughs> it's pretty strict. Yeah. yeah. Uh. You know, I've heard, I mean, they, I mean, back then they kicked my parents out for getting married. Yeah. Students weren't allowed to be married. And I think now they probably suggest that students get married. Right. Yeah, it's, how times have changed. That was one thing I was going to ask because, like, I know we want to talk about kind of what was real and what wasn't, and I was curious if that was really true if they had to quit school. But yeah, it was. That was true. Wow, yeah, that was true. That's insane. 
So did the story of them, like, how, like, him talking and, like, how they met, is that how it worked? Like, she saw him talking and was giggling and they you kind know, of stood up for each other? My, well, well, one of the things is my mom was actually engaged oh. to another man at the wow. time. Wow. And my dad kind of stole her away. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's kind of funny. But a lot of it seemed really true. I don't know if that's exactly they met in class like mm, that or not. Okay. Um, it was a cute story. Yeah. No. I, th- <laughs> I mean, I thought it was well done. Yeah. The, the beginning especially. I, I, You know, it was easier for me to watch because yeah. there wasn't so many emotions in it. Yeah. Man. Um, yeah, so I know you want to, on behalf of your real life, we want to kind of go through what you want people to know about the real story versus the movie. And, um, yeah, if that's – it's cool if you still want to go through Yeah, those no, things. I mean, it's – well, no, it's – I mean, there's small things mm-hmm. that you could, you know, that, you know, like, like the PTL set. Uh-huh. Like, they have it split up. But actually, like the one on like there's this the tan set was the side set of the the eighties set. Oh wow! So the light blue set was the seventies set. Oh. Um. So by the time, you know, my parents got in the eighties, their set looked like a looked like a living room. Okay. It didn't look like a interview anymore. It looked like a living room. Oh, that's fun. So. So it was weird that they kept the 70s set all the way through the 80s, and I'm sure they did that for budget reasons. That's true. Um, you know, because I'm sure it wasn't this, you know, probably spent all the budget on the makeup. But, um, <laughs> but, um, but you know what I mean? So it was really like, it was really, you know, so that was surreal. Yeah. Um, but my parents always did walk down in the audience at the beginning of the show. Mm-hmm. Um you know, so that was interesting. So, you know, like there's little things like that. Like, you know, I, I think my dad cut out the, the baby blue suits by the time the 80s rolled around. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, you, know, so there's, you know, there's little things like that. But that really wasn't what caught me. I mean, I thought that would catch me. I think what some of the stuff that I felt like she got right, you know, like her performance, which I guess we could talk about after we talk about kind of what, what was real and what's not. Like, like they, my dad, like in the movie, they, my dad has – this assistant and um his, that's that was that guy who the, the act the name of the character they have uh, john wesley fletcher mm-hmm. was never my dad's assistant that guy was a traveling evangelist who oh, wow. was kind of not a very nice man to be honest with you and um and was actually the one who ta- introduced my dad to jessica hahn but i guess for they you know they when you're trying to put 30 years into two hours they right. kind of tighten it up and so I can all I could tell was that that was a combination of uh, my dad's assistant um, who would have been David and then his bodyguard Don Hardister and maybe a little bit of Shirley Fulbright his secretary mixed in um, but so I, you know so they had a lot of those like kind of mixed characters in their movies ah, okay. you know um, also like we always had to have security and I think they probably wrote out that part a lot because I think that would have just made for a crowded screen, right? you know, of a lot of stuff. Um, also like, you know, I mean, they didn't, I talked to Jessica about my mother, but they, but like the script writers never talked to us and the mm-hmm. director never talked to us. I ended up meeting them all at the, after the film was done. Um, so that that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and as far as like scenes, I mean, the biggest one that sticks out to me is my mom with Gary Paxton when she's pregnant with me. Yes. And that did not happen. Okay. Like, I w- like that takes place in 1980, mm-hmm. and they have it in 1980, but I was born in 1975. <laughs> um, so I was well born in a lot. And that's the only one that made me go like, made me not understand uncomfortable and not understand why they would do it because you know like a lot of the argument was with when i talked to people afterwards i was like oh well we just wanted to you know celebrate your mom i'm like well how does my mom's water breaking uh straddling some guy (laughs) yeah make her look better you know or make her look good and that was the one 
decision that I thought was 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 probably poorly done, and not just because she was pregnant with me. Also, like how my dad shows up to the hospital and he's there. Yes, I, I was mean that's just not okay. That that never happened. I was like, he drove her to the hospital. I was like, yeah. Wow. So okay. no, that okay. didn't happen. What happened was <laughs> is that my mom went to the hospital, and my dad was about to go on TV, and he, my mom said, finish the show and get over here. But go ahead and finish the show. It's going to be eight hours. And then they, she had to have an emergency C-section. Oh, wow. And so he was thought that he was just, I mean, because this was their second child. So they thought it would be like normal where right. you just stay at the hospital for like 20 hours. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's really pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, both times, both, both my children were born, at, you know, you just kind of hunker down and just stay there forever. Um, so before I was born... I mean, I, right when I was born, they called the TV. I mean, they called PTL. It's like, oh, you know, Jim, get over here. You know, you're, you're having a kid, but he was on TV. So how they told him was they just flashed it onto the screen. It's a boy. It's a boy. So wow. that's how my dad found out I was born. And there's actually a scene like that. that I mean, not in the movie, but there's actually in real life, there, there's tape of that somewhere. Aww. So that's pretty interesting. I mean, yeah. it, 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 and um, so that didn't happen. Huh. That was dramatized. And that kind of was dramatized on, like, making your dad to be this bad character for a hot second. Yeah, where he was like, take the baby away. You know, yeah. You know? yeah. And that didn't happen. And so Good. that felt a little bit, like, a little bit tough. And and the only reason I think, like, if my mom was still alive, that would have been where she would have had an issue, too, is just because I remember that there was this reporter once who wrote, like, I was an unwanted child, Aww. like an accident. And my mom got so angry because she's like, we planned on you. You know, yeah. we planned you. You were a planned birth. And she saw this reporter in the courtroom. And she stood up and started screaming at this wow. guy about that issue. So I think for her, that was, you know, me and my, my sister were very sacred to her. And so I think that would have been the only thing that probably – would have annoyed her about the film. Of course. Um, but, you know, and Jessica had told me about that scene beforehand. Mm. Um, and it almost felt like she kind of was like, oh, why did we do this? Now yeah. I have to, you know, talk on the phone with Jay and explain <laughs> to him this whole thing. Aww. Um, That's really cool of her to do that. Yeah, yeah. She was, she's was. she been really great along the way. So, you know, you got to realize is there's all sorts of, I mean, the person I really wanted to talk to was was the screenwriter who I met at the premiere for a few minutes. Mm. And when I met him, I said, man, I really wish you would have called me. You could have had a better film. Um, <laughs> you know, and I wasn't trying to be a passive aggressive jerk. I was yeah. just trying to be honest. You know, yeah. like I, I just, you know, I'm really inspired by people like John White and who, mm. you know, who's who was also known as Johnny Rotten from the Sex Pistols. Mm -hmm. You know, like he doesn't always say what you want to hear, but he speaks his 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 truth, and and like even when it's uncomfortable, and I yeah. kind of like that. So, you know, I, I you know I would have liked to sat down with him, and and I did talk to the director, which was crazy because I used to watch the director, you know, on TV because he oh, used wow. to be in like the sketch comedy show uh, when I was a teenager that was on MTV all the time. And uh, so it was really weird now that he's a, a director. I, I, I wouldn't expect that. But I did tell him, I was like, well, why didn't you guys talk to us more about the script? You know, yeah. and I actually told him there's a scene in this story where my mom meets these kids mm -hmm. and um, they're making fun of her. And she goes over and introduces herself and gives them her like picture. Yeah. But the real story is even more interesting is that that happened at the Palm Desert Town Center Mall in Palm Desert. Mm -hmm. And um and she went up to them and said, hey, guys, if you're going to make fun of me, at least introduce yourself. And then she invited them to go eat. And there was Marie Callender's in the place. And she goes, you guys can get whatever you want. It's on me. And she went and sat and talked to those kids for like an hour. And That's had, awesome. Had food with them. And I'm like, you know, so to me, it's like. That would have been great. Like the real story is even more interesting than fiction, yeah. you know, or. um you know, they could have alluded that, like, hey, you guys want to grab some food? You know, anything like that, yeah. you know. But I, and those are the type of things I think we would have added. Oh. Um, me and my sister would have added to the film. But I always feel like, I feel like Hollywood has this thing where they are afraid of the family. Hmm. Or maybe they're afraid that they're going to get sued. Right. And, you know, I don't know, you know, like, or that 
we don't understand Hollywood. But to me, like, as someone who's led, like, a church most of his life, you know, I would just think, like, you know, bring on the family but have boundaries with them. You know, yeah. still do what you want. Like, it's, you know, it's called leadership. That's kind of how you do it, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, but, I, but Jessica's been super cool about it and everything else. I think it's, like, outside of Jessica and Andrew, it's been kind of a strange journey you know i got i got to meet vincent who played um jerry falwell and he's a really cool guy um just 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 for a few minutes but i was fanning out so it wasn't one of those (laughs) things where i was going to sit down and have a talk with him i just wanted to you know also know i met jerry falwell and then i felt like he did a good job because jerry falwell did talk like he was preaching almost when you would talk to him um but yeah you know and there's some things my sister would know too um, that, that were, that were, were right. And so like, oh, like my dad would have never wrestled. Like I know what they were assuming <laughs> when my dad wrestles the yeah. friend on the ground, yeah. his assistant, but you know, that's something my dad would have also never done. You know, he was very introverted and huh. like, also like my mom, my mom, my dad and mom both knew about Steve Peters, her interviewing him, okay. you know, that would not have been a surprise to my dad. Like yeah. my mom never booked shows. <laughs> you know, she didn't book guests that, you know, that was something that my dad and there was a reason my dad had my mom do the interview with just her, Yeah. you know, it's because he knew she could get away with it Wow. at a time when he wouldn't have been as, as, as well received for that. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I did like the fact that they humanized my dad and I mm-hmm. don't feel like they made him the villain, but they did, I feel like made him questionable at times. Right. And, um, and, and I, I would say that's how the most world sees them. So I would say they humanize them to the world. I mean, I've even heard reviewers say that they were too kind to my dad. Wow. You know, which is interesting to write about someone that you've never met before. Right. And your whole opinion is based on what you've heard on the media. Mm-hmm. And then say they were too good to that person. Right. Like, you know, like, really? Um, I mean, I know that my dad's kind of gone off the rails these past few years with being very conservative and things like that. But, you know, that's not who he was back then. Right. Um, so I, I was really happy with Andrew's portrayal of my dad. Um, I wish they would have talked a little bit more about the trial, you know, I mean, but it was, but it was there to focus on my mom because the trial is very interesting too. I mean, most, you know, like reading the articles that interviews have been done with some of the cast members, it's like the journalists always seem to get the get the charges for my dad wrong hmm. they always seem to get the facts messed up are there and they'll say like jessica hahn church secretary oh, now gosh. jessica <laughs> hahn may have may have been a church secretary somewhere yeah but she never worked for my parents right you know she never worked in charlotte um you know she didn't even live in charlotte so mm-hmm. it's just funny how they just kind of put little things in there mm-hmm. almost almost is like it spices up their story right you know and it might be true that she was once a church secretary somewhere, you know, but like they make it sound like it was my dad's secretary, (laughs) you know? And so they always get, you know, these things and these, the facts wrong. And it's like, to me, it's like crazy. Like, like journalism is so poorly done. And I think about everything that we deal with now, you know, with politics and with COVID, you know, and you go like, man, if, you know, I, I hope that the, the, they're not as lazy as the entertainment journalists, right. you know, who don't seem to, to really want to check their facts or don't feel like that's important enough. Like, I hope we're not learning about COVID from someone who's fact checking Wikipedia, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh it's funny because a picture came out and with me and my date and it came out and it was like my ex-wife's name. Oh my Like, you know, God. you could tell that they, because on Wikipedia it says I'm still married, which I don't know how to, I tried to change it once and then it changed it back the next day. So, um, but you know what I mean? It's like one of those things that's really funny. It's like, well, the majority of people think Jay's married. I guess Wikipedia stays that way. But it's just funny, <laughs> like even those facts, like you know, just the little things that uh... they, they 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 get wrong. And it's one, you know, you do feel like you're nitpicking a bit, but at the same time, you go like, man, this is my life. You know, oh, I live yeah. this every day. Yeah. Was this like like Wikipedia recently? Like you had a date at the premiere, and they were saying that was your wife. Yes. Oh my yes. gosh. Wow. Yeah. So that that's that's. You know, <laughs> so I sent it to my ex-wife. I just sent her the, just the written part. And yeah. I was like, well, I was really glad you made it out to the <laughs> premiere. And she's like, oh yeah, thanks for inviting me. You know, I mean, <laughs> everybody laughed so about funny. it, That's but it's just one of those things where you just kind of go like, 
you know, how, you know, how much effort does it take to find these things out? Right. You know, especially at a movie premiere like that big, it's not like some like indie film yeah. somewhere. I'm like, that's like major actors and people you would think they would do a little bit more research. And a lot of, <laughs> and a lot of the people are still like a lot of the people are still alive, you right. know? Yeah. And I don't think it would bother me as much. Have I not worked so hard, like on my dad's case and things like that. So we, you know, and also in the film, they had my dad in prison in 1995, and my dad was out of prison by then. I think he got out of prison in the end of 93, mm. um, or beginning of 94, or end of 93, I can't remember the date exactly, but, um, so he wasn't in prison. The prison they had him in was, like, the first prison he went to, mm -hmm. and the majority of his prison time was spent in Minnesota. Okay. So, you know, it's just little things here and there that, <laughs> that you see are, 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 are different, yeah. Um, oh, and like, you know, my parents never had giant pictures of themselves hanging up in their houses. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've so never seen you know, that, yeah. You know, and you go like, you know, it, it's that, it's the idea behind what, you know, sometimes it's that idea of what people think. Yeah. And to be honest, like, I feel like the film did a great job at humanizing my parents yeah. and bringing some of it more down to a, a real Thing where you kind of can empathize with them as human beings, mm -hmm. which I think you would if you had sat in the room with my mother or you sat even though if you've met my my dad even to this day, yeah, you know, I mean, my dad don't talk, but I mean, if you sat down with my dad today, you would see that he's like, you know, like just an interesting human being, you know, he's not like a super villain or anything like that. Like, you'd realize, like, oh, he actually believes what he's talking about. It might be crazy, but he believes it, you know, so that's the interesting thing. Um, about my parents. And I felt like they, they kind of captured that a bit. So I, I, that's what I appreciate is that the humanizing part of it. Um, you know, there were some other things that, I, Oh, well, you know, and I'm not in the film. They had a guy who played me. Yeah. Um, yeah. He got, uh, he got, uh, edited out of the film. Um, and that's, you know, like when my mom overdoses, like they have it happen on the show and that scene where she loses her, her her wits on the show did happen but when she overdosed she was actually with me in tennessee alone hmm. and that was really scary yeah and also uh, when my parents got divorced i was the one who told my dad so i mean i felt like i played a big role yeah. in their lives and you know and i'm sure for time's sake that's what it was. and it was about my mom but you know there's those certain scenes where it's okay because it works for the movie you know um but when it was such a part of your life, you know, so I almost felt like a ghost in the theater, you know, like you were kind of like, or watch having a dream that you're going to sit back and watching certain things play out that, and you're removed. I was telling Mark, I think it would have, it would have made a great series. Like if they could have like made it longer and included all those details. You know, so Pete and me and Helen um, are working with Vice right now to do a documentary on my on my mom and, and, and maybe my dad. Um, so, um, I think we'll be able to, you know, focus on some of that stuff a little bit more. Cause I think yeah. we're going to have a little more time to do that. So that's awesome. But yeah. a series would be cool. Like me and my yeah. sister, I think would, would have loved to help produce a series like, you know, like a six part series or something where you could get into all those different parts of their lives. Cause it, 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 it's so interesting. I mean, they had to cut out my parents starting TBN for time, you know, so like not only did my parents go from starting the 700 club, then they started the TBN and then they left TBN and started PTL. So oh, yeah. Was CBN so they had on a the huge movies, history. Was CBN supposed What's to that? be, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Does, was CBN supposed to be TBN or is CBN a real thing? No, CBN was the company that 700 club started from. So Pat Robertson, yeah, Pat Robertson owned the Christian Broadcasting Network. I see. And my dad started a show called the 700 Club that became really popular. Wow. And so that's why Pat was like, I can host the show because Pat wanted to take the show over from my dad because he realized it was such a, a hit. And... Um, and so it was kind of like one of those things where my parents kind of got chased out of things they started because people are because of jealousy, because my dad was such a workaholic. And I think that has a lot to do with my dad's, uh, you know, my dad suffered, 
sexual abuse as a child from a pastor in the church, um, an assembly's a God pastor for many, many years. And, um, and so I think one of my dad's coping ne- mechanisms became workaholism. And so, you know, that was the thing about my dad is like, you know, yeah, my parents made good money and they had nice stuff, but it was never about that for him. He was just always working and working and working, like constantly working. Like, I think he had the nice stuff for my mom to go home to and for me, him not to feel bad about not being there for me and my sister as much because he worked so much. Um, he was just constantly working and he would be working at home. And, and I thought they captured that pretty well in the film. I mean, he was he was definitely. A, and he still is a workaholic. You know, I mean, everybody, I know, he's 81 and he's still, you <laughs> going know, at it, huh? yeah, still going at it, still <laughs> filming five shows a week and building stuff. And wow. it's like, it's like, he's just like, it's like a Terminator. Like it's programmed in him <laughs> to just work. Yeah. And so that's what he does. Can I ask you, I feel like you've told this story a zillion times, but I'm, I'm really bad at understanding some things. So in the movie, it talks about when the whole like quote unquote scandal happened, it was because mm-hmm. he paid Jessica Hahn with the money that had been collected from the donations, right? Well, that's what they make it sound like. But okay. What happened was is Jessica Hahn had come and asked for money, hush money. Uh huh. Um, and originally they didn't tell my dad. My dad's assistant pastor Richard Dorch did not communicate it to my father. Okay. And went to Roe Messner mm-hmm. and said, hey, this is happening. And they borrowed the money from Roe Messner. Ah. Um, and, uh, and said they would pay him back. And, and so that was what originally happened. Okay. That's why when I saw the movie, I was like, wow, I did not know that. That's probably why, because it wasn't true. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, it's kind of like kind of true but not complete truth gotcha. it, i think they they realized if they got into that that i mean like it's kind of complicated yeah like, you know and i guess the question is 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 did my dad know about the payment or not you know that right. was that's would be the, and i don't think i've ever really talked to him about it. i've talked to him about what happened with jessica hahn in mm-hmm. detail but um not 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 the payment part but yeah mm-hmm. so that's what but i remember roe being involved yeah and that being strange, because Roe was going to loan them the money to do it, so it didn't, you know. Wow. And Roe went on because to honestly, be your father. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. My, my mom's husband, yeah. But I yeah. think what, what, because I think if my dad would have agreed to pay her, he could have just paid her personally out of his yeah. own money. I, uh, it's not something that he would have done. He was very protective over the partners. Good. And very protective over that stuff. I mean, I can remember saying things to him as a kid, because I'd always hear stuff, and he would, he was very very I mean the first time I saw him cry was on the phone with Jerry Falwell hmm. telling Jerry Falwell to please take care of the partners yeah you know so he had this really like weird relationship with the partners I just I mean I'm not saying everything was above board uh, for my, my folks I mean I, I know they had to my dad had to do a lot he had to raise like almost a million dollars every two days oh my goodness um and and I know that they, certain things, like, I don't think it was illegal, though, to be honest with you. Like, he'd raise money for something, but then have to put that money towards something else. Because, right. I mean, but another building. I, that's another thing I wish they would have shown the grounds. I wish they would have shown more of the water park. And yeah. All the hotels and the people that love centers and the uh. prison ministry and the uh, unwed mother's home ministry. You know, they don't, they don't, they mention it, which I thought was great. I was really happy that they mentioned it. Because you, you just get so used to people not realizing how much good was done. Right. You know, that it was a ministry, that it was helping people, um, that it was getting people off the streets, that it were that people were getting fed, you know, that people were getting clothed and people were getting, you know, children were being adopted because of what my parents were doing. And yeah. mothers were given a place to, you know, choose if they wanted to keep their baby or adopt. Yeah, you know, I mean, like there was all these different types of, of mm. ministries that were happening and world outreach all over the world. This yeah. stuff was happening. And um I don't, you know, no one ever talks about that anymore because they think like all they, I, I think there's this I, concept is that, oh, they were manipulating these little old ladies to give mm. money and which always thrives me 
kind of nuts because I'm always like, when do, you know, like, are we all of a sudden we reach a certain age and we become gullible and we're no longer accountable <laughs> for our actions? Right. Like, you know, like, oh, <laughs> these poor old people. Like, are we just like children when we get old? Like, I kind of almost feel like there's like an ageism in it mm-hmm. that's okay that you can, you can put in there because they're like, oh, no, it's okay because, you know, they're being taken advantage of and we're just trying to protect them. And I'm like, really? Like. <laughs> I'd rather, you know, get advice from an old person than I would a young person. I'm yeah. just going to go ahead and say that. Even somebody in their middle age who thinks they know it all. <laughs> um, but, you know, sometimes old people go to Las Vegas and, and, and spend their money there as well. Yeah. You know, and, <laughs> but sometimes it's just like, hey, I'm at the end of my life. I'm going to do what the hell I want right. and support what I want, too. So I don't know. I think mm. we create these narratives to make people into something more, more bad, you know, more yeah. insidious, you know, like. How can we make them bad? But, um, you know, and, and, and the, the homes that my, the, the, the homes that my parents had for the, like people who, who were disabled and, and things like that. I mean, they did a lot of really cool stuff and mm. I, I wish people saw more of that, but yeah. cause I really do think my parents were trying to do something. Like, I think they were trying to change Christianity in a way that was like, it wasn't the stuffy legalistic Christianity they grew up with. Right. You know, and I think the problem was is that it just re- required so much money to be raised to do it. Yeah. You know, to be on TV, to have a satellite network. To ha- I mean, so I think my dad was always just a few steps ahead of like, you know, the, the it all came in mm-hmm. if he didn't continue to just raise that money. And I think that's what what just got out of the you know, took the focus off of what, you know, of what they were really trying to do, huh. you know, yeah. and then you get a few like, you know, reporters, local reporters who are like, yeah, we're going to tear this. We're going to blow the lid off of this thing, <laughs> you know, who don't understand how churches work. And one, there's never been a church that size right. or a church that's ever done anything like that. You know, there's never been churches with multiple hotels, uh, multiple world ministries, a satellite in the sky. I mean, there's never been anything mm-hmm. like that. You know, yeah. and then you get Charles Shepard, uh, who was the big guy who, who 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 came in and really was like really did all the did a lot of the investigation journalism. You know, he's just you know some you know really left liberal kid who's like, oh yeah, I've got a chip on my shoulder. I'm going to tear this place down, and he doesn't understand how it works. He doesn't even understand the laws. I mean, uh, when I when Revolution went from a ministry to a church and became a nonprofit. I was like, holy crap, everything's, you know, completely changed. Yeah. And people make it sound like it's really like, oh, you don't have to pay taxes and you don't have to do all that. And I'm like, it's completely not true. Like, <laughs> you do have to pay taxes. And, and even when you're a church, it's, people can get tax write-offs, but there's still, and there's tax breaks you can get, mm-hmm. but not, it's not, it's not easy. You know, it's yeah. not really that, it's very difficult and intricate to deal with. Um, so you know, I honestly, I've had a staff of seven at one time and I was overwhelmed. So I couldn't imagine oh, having God. a staff of, of a thousand. And, and men, again, that's not me trying to make excuses, but that's me is trying to empathize yeah. with what my parents were trying to do at the time. Yeah. And, 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 and I don't know. I just honestly, like even seeing the film, I was like, you know, I hope what it does is it causes people to think like, what would I have done if I was in their shoes? Yeah. Because... I don't know what I would have done. I was there as a kid, you know. Um, But at the same time, I also have to deal with the fact that my parents really did sacrifice being parents so they could help other people. Right. You know, so they could reach all these people. And so in some ways, I feel like, I, you know, I sacrificed my parents for their work. So then to have it all boil down to greed and bullshit, you know, you kind of go like, ugh. So I'm glad that, you know, people are seeing my mom in a different light and I hope they'll see my dad in a different light as well. You know, I mean, I can't, uh, who he is now is, is something that was different than who he was then, but I hope they'll be able to take a different look at that time and, mm-hmm. and, and go like, Oh, you know, it's not black and white as we made it be, right. you know, the media was pretty awful to them and there was a lot of scapegoating, Yeah. you know, for people who were hurt by religion, it was a way for them to kind of get out their anger in their judgment because it was across the board. Yeah. I mean, I remember going into churches, hearing them make jokes and make on and talk bad about my parents, Mm -hmm. you know, and watching on Saturday night live and watching comedians and watching even rock musicians make songs that were mean about them, Yeah, you know? And so there was, 
a lot of it was really it was really a tough time and everybody just had this one you know idea and and wasn't you know and it was funny because it was a few people like the MCC church which is was the first openly gay affirming church mm-hmm. that kind of held on to the memory of my mother Aww. you know and 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 knew what happened with with Steve and, and held that for a long time and it's just crazy that it's taken like you know yeah. two like two gay guys to do a documentary about my mom and then 20 years later yeah. to have Jessica Chastain and have Hollywood do a film about my mom in order for there to be any type of restoration towards my family when we're part of the church that was part of a church all the church church you know capital C you know is all about forgiveness and restoration and we never they never found that and even my family never found that um, as a whole, you know, never found that from the church, you know, and had to kind of find that from like Hollywood and filmmakers. So it's interesting that that's, you know, God, I, uh, it shows you how far the church has gotten away from what it's supposed to be. Yeah. I, I think like right as soon as I like got out of the theater, I text you right away. And I was just like, I like, I'm not kidding. Like my mascara was like kind of like going <laughs> to my eyes. Because, like, when I first met you, I always told you when I was little, I wanted to be like your mom. And yeah. I knew when I was little that she was authentically herself and she did not care. In my yes. brain, that's what I saw, you know? And I knew that, like, just seeing her on TV. And so it was weird. Like, I felt like I saw a little bit of myself watching her. Like, yeah. being like, I remember being younger and being like, um, growing up in the church world and I would say things like, Oh, I want to do this stuff for, you know, a certain group of people at the time, whatever, whichever one it was that yeah. was like shunned. And they were like, Oh, that's great. But you know, hate the sin, love the sinner. And right, it was always right. that. And they were always like, Oh, Christy, you live in your own world or you're too naive or, and I just kind of shut down. And, and I just, I was like, Oh my God, like Tam- I, I want to, ma- there should be a brace of this. Like what would Tammy Faye do? Because <laughs> like, I just, I was like, man, she, even after all of that, like in the end of the movie, which I'm sure is, you know, very different than real life out of all the things she accomplished, but like she was still herself even after all of that. And it was like really, it was like moving. Well, I mean, she was till the day she, day she died. Yeah. You know, she was that, um, I mean, she did an interview with Larry King the night before she died. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, she and and that's what you know that's what i would hope to hear is that people said you know i identified you know and i think because that's what it takes us to identify sometimes with people to have empathy and to step out of stereotypes of uh even if it's a smaller stereotype group or a bigger stereotype you know whatever you know um you know being a televangelist is kind of a small group of (laughs) people to have (laughs) stereotypes but there's still stereotypes and a lot of those times those stereotypes are true but um but to kind of see things in a different light, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and I, but honest with you, but like the church has always kicked against that. And how I know it is because I really did follow in my parents' footsteps. And I say my parents for a reason. It's not just my mom. You know, my parents embraced people when they weren't supposed to. They both did. Um, I mean, I remember them bringing on pastors who had been divorced and having them come and host the show with them and things like that, because they were trying to help the person live, you know, and recover for, you know, and not be completely destroyed. And then, you know, I can remember years later going to these Christian music festivals and getting screamed at by the leadership of the Christian festivals and by people who attended, because I was saying, we got to love gay people. We got to love Democrats. We got, and I mean, and, and half of them didn't know that I was a Democrat you know, and you know what I mean? But I was saying like these things, like we've got to do these things. We've got to think differently. We've got to be more open. And it was still a fight then. I mean, when I came out gay affirming, which was before my mom died, which I'm really happy about, um, you know, I got, cause I got to talk to her about it. And, um, you know, I had to let my whole staff go. I had to, you know, I lost everything as well. So, I mean, it's like one of these things where it's like, you know, and I remember the people, the people who turn their backs on me, some of them now are affirming, you know, and out there, pre, you know, and, and a part of that. So it's kind of interesting to see what time does. Um, but I think when you try to do something 
different or think differently or you become more open or you're ahead of your time or a pioneer, you, you do suffer. You do suffer. And I do, I don't honestly don't think that had that, had the scandal not happened, um, had my parents not, had my parents had a better marriage, but you know what, that's just humans. So, and I like that, you know, I, you know, the sexual stuff that's funny is like the sexual stuff in the movie didn't bother me as much as because it humanized them. You know, I'm like people, you know, have sexual stuff in their lives. You know, there's sex, people have sexual issues, you know, so that's human to have a sexual, sexual issues in your life. People have tough marriages. That's just the reality of being married. I've mm -hmm. done it twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so I'm saying it's like, you know, there's this, this, I, I, I like that, that, you know, it, that I felt like expressed the humanity, but I mean, honestly, had my parents not had the fall and not not fallen and Jerry Falwell would have never, you know, had he given the place back or not come over, come along, you know, I mean, they would have still been doing this similar thing. I think, I mean, I think there were that, you know, there'd be, it would be a monstrosity and that probably would have probably led us all to burn out anyway. And I don't know what I would have become, but you know, I might've been like, we're tearing half the things down, you know, who knows? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but but that was the one thing that the essence at their, of, of their humanity was always to embrace other people's humanities and let them know that God loved them. Yeah. And that was so strongly put into who I am and my work and, mm -hmm. and what my sis, who my sister is and her work that we just have always loved and accepted people no matter what. I love it. And so that was something that was really true from both of them. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm grateful that they're kind of getting a better a better look and that hopefully people will continue to have a different look and this will kind of spur something for people to look at things and kind of, you know, see things differently and ask questions next time they cancel someone. Mm -hmm. Cause that's the weird thing is like my parents, you know, people are like, Oh, I don't get to like cancel culture. I'm like, cause we were pretty much canceled, right. you know? And, and my mom was canceled to the point where people don't even remember a good thing, you yeah. know? And when you cancel somebody, you, you cancel their, their whole life, yeah. their whole work, all their career. Yeah. I think it's, and, toxic. um, it's super toxic. And to me, it's like, if you're going to subscribe to the religion of Christianity, um, then there's no place to cancel people because either Jesus didn't teach that either. Neither did Paul. You know, it's not a new Testament concept. It's about forgiveness and grace. I'm not saying there's not accountability, but, um, but it's always with restoration and forgiveness in mind. So to me, that's, you know, but it's just interesting to see like that the church is really sucks at its job. <laughs> yeah. and so we have to kind of depend on other people to do it, Ugh. you know, or like, you know, cause it's like, what's that? Like, not my circus, not my monkey kind oh, of attitude, uh -huh. you know? So it's not my problem. And I feel like that's what the church did, you know? Oh, that's the assemblies of God's problem. The assemblies of God was like, well, that's the baker's problem. You know, everybody just kind of like, that's, that's their issue. And, you know, like you're supposed to be a hospital, you know, so you're supposed to run out and get the sit. You're not supposed to sit and watch people suffer. That's not the, what the church is called to do. Unfortunately, we um, we've become really good at that. And not only, not only, uh, not only looking at their suffering, but like attacking their suffering. And the sad thing now is I see like a lot of people in the church kind of who are, have rebelled against that and are still in the church. But now all they're doing is attacking those people. And we're like, I've become now we've attacked each other. And I'm like, guys, all right, this infighting is not working at all, you know? So what we have to learn to do is I think argue well and have really tough conversations and, and try to move forward or the church will be dead in 20 years would yeah. be my prediction. Eesh, man. Sorry. Sorry to get that heavy on you, but I think that's, that's the implications of what <laughs> I got from the film as well. So, and my no. own life. <laughs> no, for sure. And like, it's, it's so interesting, like, not really on the same subject, but just watching, watch like I said, watching it from the outside. I think I, it's weird how I think I would have viewed the movie completely different if I was just like, oh, I love Tammy Faye. I'm going to go watch this movie. But knowing you watching the movie, I was getting so riled up. Like, because I am one of those, I have a friend named JD who I like love. And back in the day, he used to date these terrible girls. And so back in the MySpace days, I put it one of those like pictures on his like wall and it said break my friend's heart and I'll break your legs yeah and I felt I was like as soon as I left there I was like somebody messes with Jay I'm gonna break their legs like I was like 
so I don't know what it was. I was ready to. Well, fight. you know, it's like when I went to the premiere, I had to, I left early. Yeah. Because it was too painful to watch yeah. with an audience. Oh my god! I, like there's the moment where my dad has like this slip of the tongue, and when he's doing the interview with uh, Ted Koppel, and the whole audience laughs. But see, for me, what I remember from that night was that was we were in California, and everything had just crushed around my family. And my dad had been canatonic on a couch for like days. You know, my mom just did not know what to do with herself. And it was the first time I saw my parents like as people. Like you go from like, this isn't mom and dad. These are two people who look like their lives have just been destroyed. Yeah. And not only that, but like their best friends yeah. were turning on them. Ugh. Like it was really like people who had been eating dinner with us literally the week before we're now on the news saying horrible things about us and wow. doing and so it was one of those things where you just you were like what the hell and it was like the whole world's mm. eyes were on us yeah and and i remember being in the i was at the i was in the house when they were doing that interview and i remember like my dad like couldn't he like he kept getting an echo in the earpiece you know for the interview and he was really frustrated by it and like ted Koppel obviously was like out to get him he wasn't there to like give them a fair handshake, you know, and that was another weird thing is when you start to see press people who are out to get you, you know, they're not out to like, you know, and I guess that's investigative reporting or whatever, but it's like, they've already kind of got their mind made up, you know, before they interview you. So it was like one of those things where it's like, wow, this is, this is what it's like is it's just, you know, they just come out and kick your ass. So, um, and I've been interviewed that way before too, especially it's been funny. Like I was one time interviewed by this, uh, Rachel Maddow. And she didn't really know who I was and she didn't know I was an ally and she didn't know all this stuff. So she just hammered on me about my parents and just hit me really hard. This was back when she was at Air America, you know, and it's just funny how you get people who have this perspective and this idea and this and they just come out with gloves on. And, um, you know, and luckily I've learned from nonviolence that that's not really how you do it um, or how you work with other people, even people who've hurt you or offended, even your enemies. So. You know, it's, it's, it's a hard thing too. Like, and it's, it's funny cause I've gone into conversations like on Twitter and, and with other groups where, where this, where similar things have happened with a family and people are talking about it and I've come in and give my perspective and I've been told that my perspective wasn't helpful and it wasn't welcome. Oh, wow. You know, so it's really interesting Ugh. to, you know, that's kind of why I don't believe in safe places. Cause they're like, Oh, we're trying to make a safe place. You can't come in here saying those things. I'm like, but yeah. this is what happened to me. Right. You know? Um, so you can learn a lot from it. So, I mean, the movies hits on many levels. So it was really hard. I had to meet, I left early. Um, uh, and I did go to the after party and that was, that was interesting and, and fun, but it was weird. Cause I went and when I first got there, there was a group of people next to me at the table next to me and they're talking about the movie and they didn't realize I'm sitting there. And so they're saying some things that aren't very nice and they're saying some things that are nice and whatever it's mixed. And I just finally got up. I walked over and said, hey, listen, I, I'm glad you guys are discussing the movie, but that was my life. If you want to come over and ask me questions, I'm glad to talk to you about it. But that's my life. You know, so, you know, like me, I've, I'm avoiding certain things on social media right now. Um, like if any like Instagram, I'm a little bit more open. But if anybody says anything mean, I usually just try to block them right now because I'm just not in the place to deal with it. You know, I've taken off all the comments on my Facebook right now. So you can't, you know, and so it's been one of those things where it's like, I've just kind of had to be very careful. Um, so at the premiere, it was kind of hard to like, I was trying to stay out of earshot because we left early, me and Lori left early and we were outside talking and people, when, when they got out and they started talking, I said, hurry, let's get in the car, you know, cause I don't mind people having opinions, mm -hmm. honestly. Like I don't mind people discussing it. It's just, if I'm within earshot of it or you're, I might get involved, you know? And so, especially when it's fresh and especially like, you know, I literally started going to see a therapist because this movie was coming out. Like I started to go see a psycho psychoanalyst because this movie was coming out. Cause I was like, I need to be prepared to go through this again because everything I deal with in my, with my analyst is comes back to that time in my life that where the movie is portrayed. So, um, so it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. It's really strange. Um, 
And it's, it's also strange to see people doing like interviews and giving talks about your parents, you know, seeing strangers give talks about your parents, you know, and you're like, <laughs> uh, shouldn't I be there? I knew them, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, my mom was like my best friend, Aww. you know, I mean, we were so close, you know, uh, so. The part in the movie where it's kind of like the little like montage of like when they're kind of showing like the, like the press going against your family and had like the yeah. RV and all this stuff. Well, I was already pretty worked up. And then there was a man sitting in front of me who was giggling. And of course, okay, he could have been laughing at Dana Carvey. I, I don't know what the heck he's yeah. laughing. But I was like, it's funny. I have this inner dialogue in my mind that will never be, it won't be public. Because it's just not who I am. But I was like, yeah. I'm going to go slap that guy in the head. You better. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny. I was talking to Mark about it. I'm like, the things that go through my head, like I would, like, I would do. I was like, I would never do. But then I was like, what if I really did that? And it was actually like a friend of Jay's or something. Like, how embarrassing. Like, <laughs> no, but I mean, it's so know, funny. It's funny. Like for me, like, but that's why I walked in the, yeah. ca- in the car. And that's why I told those Ugh. people, like, I didn't want to hear anymore. Yeah. Because uh, there's a certain point now that I'm 45 and, and it's weird that I feel like I've become more punk rock as I've gotten yeah. older. Um, I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> Usually it's the reverse, I think, but, um, yeah. And, you know, and I'm not in a band or anything, so there's no reason for me to become more punk rock, but I have. <laughs> so there's a part of me that just like the, my inner John Lydon or any John or Rotten wants, you know, will say something. Right. So in some ways, that's why I avoid it, because I'm like, I'm tired of listening. You know, I'm tired of just being like, oh, I'll let it slide. You know, like I'm like, you know what? No, this person should probably learn an important lesson at this point of like, yeah. you never know who you're standing next uh-huh. to, you know, and you never know what's going on. And I think especially, I think the stakes are kind of high right now with everybody being so, like, feisty and so cancel-ready and so easily offended, you know. But it's funny, like, the, the reason I have a hard time with woke folks is because some of the people who I, why I had to put my Facebook on, on things, some of the people who were the meanest about my mom, personally, my mom were people who I went on to look at their, their pages and, and they were super woke folks, you know? And these were people who I, a couple of years ago, I would have thought were my allies, you know, and who I was safe with. But it's like, they even have an exception to the rule of who they're allowed to hate or who they're allowed to talk shit about and who they're allowed to project onto um, their own uh, prejudices. And it's like, you know, as long as their prejudice fits this frame of being woke or progressive, it's okay. And it's like, I don't want to be a group of either group that has a group that I hate. Uh, You know, I want to figure out and how do I stop hating that group? I might hate a group, but I want to have a conversation with those people because it's way more interesting than allowing hate to turn me into some bitter person. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Yes, 100%. Like confront it, like yeah. deal with it, and go for it. You know, you only live once. Man, and, you know, what, and, and what are we gonna love our? What, you know, what am I gonna leave my kids to? I want to leave my kids to a better world, of not course. one that's more divided. Yeah. Oh man, I would, I would. Oh man, I don't know. You're way, you're way stronger, like than I, I think I am. And well, you I know, you say that, it. but you don't know it until you're in it. Oh, you yeah. don't know until you're in the position, and that's when you kind of realize, am I strong enough to do this or not? And there's times where I'm not strong. I mean, Chrissy, I'll be honest with you. I've I've been in bed for almost five days until my kids got back. You know, it has been hard for me to feed myself. You know, like I really, this brought up a lot of emotions, you know? And then my therapist was saying, like, I think you have some anger that you're not dealing with. And he's like, you know, I think you're not coping with your anger and that's why you're sleeping. I don't think it's just, you're sad. He goes, I think you're angry. You know, and well, you know, I'm like, well, probably, but I've been preaching grace so long. Everybody else is so pissed off. I guess I'm just trying to not be pissed off. Right. But it's like you're not I guess allowed there to. Has, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can't be. Everybody else is angry. I'm not going to be angry. Yeah. I think you, but anybody it, has every right to be angry. And so, yeah, so maybe that's a bit of an emotion I need to let, let loose. Yeah. And um, I just worry about the person who gets it. Maybe you need to start a punk rock band. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe that's where I can get it out. <laughs> well, I've learned four chords, so whenever you're ready, oh, there you go. I heard that's all you really need. It's like three or four. Yeah, four <laughs> chords. I think it's yeah. Was it three chords or four chords? I think maybe three. three. I think it's three. Yeah. So now you've got an extra one. So there you go. <laughs> we'll be extra, extra great. I have a yeah. band. I don't know if I ever told you about it. I have an imaginary band called the Pantyhose. Nice. And we're either the Pantyhose or the Pantyhose, however you want to read it. 
So you're welcome to join the pantyhose anytime. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I play the, the triangle pantyhose. and the pantyhose. Oh, nice. <laughs> but man, yeah, I. It's funny, yeah, just being in that movie, and I feel like I'm an empath in that way where I take on everyone's feelings. So I feel like I was watching it and thinking about how you would feel the entire time, and it like it really got me. Fe- like I don't know, I was just like so. I felt so heavy when I left. But I, I loved it so much. But also, it was just like, I want well, to give Jay the biggest hug. Yeah, I wanted I to hug you really so heavy. much. <laughs> I felt heavy. I mean, I, yeah. you know, the thing that really redeemed it all for me, like all the, you know, is like at the end is my sister's song is at the mm. end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Which, and, by the way, is amazing. That girl can sing. Yeah, Good she Lord. can sing. And she's amazing. And yeah. like, it's anywhere you download music or listen to music. Yes. And so um, <laughs> it hit me. Because my sister is the only person I've ever been able to completely relate to. Me and my sister lived through it. So we're the only one that can kind of sit in the same room and, and not know what stings and know what doesn't sting and know how to, you know, what, what it was like. And so it was just like to hear her sing that song and hear her voice and know that she was the one that's been, you know, we, me and her have both went through like such hell when all that happened. Um, and, and, and in some ways never fully recovered from it. Like our mental health never recovered from that time, period. I, I mean, I don't and, get it. And, it, and it, you know, and so my parents are a bit to blame, but also how people treated us is also to blame. You know, yeah. I think everybody plays a part. And, um, and so, and also mm-hmm. us living our lives and deciding to forgive people and mm-hmm. not live in that blame at the same time. I just don't think people realize how, uh, how much their opinions and actions and their words do hurt and do, and do last. I don't think people understand that. And, um, and, I, and I'm saying that cause I'm hoping people who listen might next time before they go on a rant on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or whatever, will think about it before they do it. Even if it's about like a band or a writer or things like that, you just never know what gets through to people and what they hear and what they see. And honestly, one negative comment can like erase a hundred good ones, you know? And so I think, you know, growing up with that constantly and then having all the cool people, you know, like Saturday Night Live and Johnny Cars, you know, all the cool hip people saying, you know, you just go like, oh my God, where do I fit? Yeah. Where do we fit? You know, this was my life. I Um, cannot imagine. Yeah. So, um, so I'm really grateful for Jessica Mm -hmm. uh, for seeing that what she saw my mom and taking it where she did. I mean, I know it wasn't perfect, but nothing's ever going to be perfect. So, you know, she did amazing at it. Like, and if so they decided good. somebody decides to do a miniseries, you should hire me, hire me and my sister as a producer. So we can yes. I help love you. It. <laughs> and you got yeah. to take a prop home from the movie. If I remember right, I stole a prop. Oh, ooh. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I have no financial anything from this movie right. you know so for me we, you know we, I, but i did help the two main actors with who were playing my parents i did talk to both of them and help them out a little bit so we were at the party and and me and Lori were there and we we're like talking on the phone joking about the phone and we're like we should take the phone <laughs> you know Aww. and unfortunately when we decide to take the phone is it's pretty much in in front of the whole security team so we're having to try like <laughs> i mean i could we just probably looked like two teenagers trying right. to steal a telephone Aww. from because these were just they were just put on the tables as like you know like little things yeah. just to be the theme of the party <laughs> and don't worry the first thing i did was we took a picture and i sent it to jessica to let her know we had stolen the phone um <laughs> actually i took another one the next day where i'm in my towel <laughs> like and to have my I, you know the thing that girls usually do on the top of their hair where they uh-huh with the, the towel, I did that with mine, and I took a picture of me on the phone That's so awesome. she could see me in, in, in the hotel robe. So, hello. <laughs> um, that was Aww. another cool thing about Jessica at the party is she kept texting me the whole time. Like when I left the movie early, Aww. you would not think the star of the movie would notice. Yeah. I get a text. You left the movie. Is everything okay? Um, she texted me through the whole party. She didn't realize that I came to the after party until I'm like, I'm sitting talking to the director. She's like, oh, so you're here. Aww. So I, so it reminded me of uh, Lloyd Dobler <laughs> when he takes his date to the, yeah. to the party, but he has to be the key master, but he's always just kind of checking on her from different places. And, um, 
Yeah. So it was really sweet. She was, you know, I, I can't say enough good stuff about her and, um, and, and, uh, and I, I really appreciate Andrew for trying to do what he did with my dad. And I think he wanted to do more, but just because the movie was so focused on my mom that he would just really, cause he did tell me, he's like, man, your dad is such a complicated character. Like he's like, I could have spent so much more time on him and done so much more with this character. I wish I could have done more with this character. So that's, you know, uh, many series. I, saying. Yeah. I wish my dad could have, you know, and hear that. Cause I think like my dad might not appreciate the film, you know, he doesn't appreciate going back to that time very right. much unless he's doing it, but otherwise he doesn't appreciate hearing about it. I don't think, but yeah, Tubby Hart. I wish I also would be like, dad, God, man, the same guy who played Spider-Man played you. Right? That's pretty cool. You that know, so cool. <laughs> um, so uh, I just, I, I, I don't, I don't know if he would be capable of seeing what Andrew tried to do. Um, but I wish he would be able to, cause I wish he would realize like, dad, there are people who want to humanize you. Cause I think he alienates himself from the world, you know, it, because he it hurt him so bad. Then he did, he felt like, you know, he feels like the villain constantly cause everybody makes him out to be the villain. So he kind of has to put himself around people who, at least treat him well, you know, cause otherwise he thinks like everybody thinks I'm a piece of shit. And I can't imagine what it would be like to live having the majority of people in the world think you were a really shitty villain. You know, I mean, I, I wouldn't want that in my life at all. And, um, and, I, and that makes me sad for him. And, and, you know, and I, I can't say much. I mean, we're strange. We don't talk. And, and honestly, it's not by my, my, my call, but at least it, 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 it gives me some empathy for him to go like, you know, I don't know what it's like to walk in that guy's shoes, you know? So, um, but I know that it's made me a better dad because Aww. of it. So, well, I am 100 zillion billion percent convinced that your mom would be super proud of you. Well, I, I, I she was before she died and I think she would have stood with me of too. I, I think my life probably would have taken a very different direction had my mom lived to be honest with you, because yeah. there were certain times she would give me very honest advice and, um, we were, you know, that's the thing is they weren't, they, they weren't naive to being human, you know, and that's the thing is I think even, even more real than in the movie, my mom was a real person, you know, and we had real conversations and we had funny talks and she was also a mama and, she, you know, she, I mean, she was my, you know, little short, tiny mama bear. <laughs> she was little. And, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, she was little, Aww. but she always was still watched out for me. You know, she was like life and, you know, you didn't want to get her on your bad side. <laughs> what a and, cool grandma um, too to be. How fun. Yeah. You know, that's James and Jonathan really got to experience yeah. that and they just love her so much. And it's been cool to watch their Instagram of like them getting all their friends together and going to the movies. And cause what's even great for them is for that period of time, they weren't alive for the majority of the p film, you know? And they kind of came after all that happened. And so they got to get the best of their, their, their grandma. They got to get the really kind of the best of Tammy Faye that was there. And they got to go eat with her and get to know her and, and, and be their grandma. And they got to know my dad a little bit as well too. So they both kind of got to, it's cool to see how they really celebrate it. That's and they've awesome. really been excited about it. Like, I kind of wish they would have been at the premiere because I feel like if anybody deserved to be there, they did because yeah. they were so excited about it. Yeah. Like for me, it's like, you know, I'm like a broken misfit toy showing up at this <laughs> thing, you know, like I could lash out at any second, you know, <laughs> or I could start crying. Aww, you know, I'd be bawling. don't know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, they were just, they would have been just like with there with their autograph books, you know, so you know like Kingpin autograph, you know what I mean? <laughs> Spider-Man. Yeah. Whatever, that's really so. cute well i oh and um, you know who sent me you know who sent me a thumbs up oh jessica God. saw your one of your ads uh -huh. for the thing the uh -huh. one that you did the picture of me and her and uh -huh. like how many questions for me and jay and uh -huh. she put a heart on it yay and, and so i saw it in my dms that she she liked it so awesome well, hopefully she's cool. listening and if she is you did a wonderful wonderful job so freaking awesome good. so good it made me have all the feels and, uh, well, I, she's been kind of mama bear in it too to yeah. be honest with you with me uh, you know like wrote me a long thing after she read the vanity fair article i did and you know noticed this thing so it's really funny like 
I don't think she's a method actor, but I think she's got some method actors actress in her. Yeah, you know. she did such a good job. She, and, and she's got kids, so I'm yeah. really excited for her kids because she's got to be a really awesome mom. Did she sing? The song? Yeah, that's her voice. I'm pretty wow. sure. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Oh man, is there like ways to hear your mom's stuff on? iTunes or Spotify? I've never actually you looked know, it up. It's just not, I think you have to go on YouTube and find uh, videos. Yeah. Um, maybe one day we'll be able to release all that stuff, but we'll cool. see. That yeah, would be so great. Oh, <laughs> Joy, this has been awesome. Yeah. Oh, wait. Did you oh. have any questions from the internet? Oh, I did. My God, so I got all distracted again. I have three, really. Uh, okay. Well, well, that's good. Three is <laughs> uh, Brian. My friend Brian told me he sent one. Yes. Okay. We'll do his first. <clears throat> he okay, put, cool. I love Jay, exclamation point. Um, said, I'd like to know what parenting characteristics he took on from his mom. Oh, very, very good question. <laughs> Many, All right. actually. Um, I take my kids out to eat a lot. Mm -hmm. And when we go out to eat, like, I know their mom's not the biggest fan of me taking them out to eat, but <laughs> honestly, I'm not a very good cook. <laughs> Um, and luckily me and her respect each other's parenting. Um, but I take my kids out to eat a lot and, um, and we always have really good conversations when we, when we're out eating, like sometimes we'll get the drive through when they come back and oh, we want to watch TV or we want to go play. But like, if we're at the, like the, the mall, they like Chipotle and there's one yeah. at the mall Aww. and they've got this thing that they get and they make special and they, you know, do it, their, you know, do all their own stuff to it. And, 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 um, <laughs> We have really good, we talk, we sit and talk. That's awesome. And I feel like that's where I got to know my mom, even though she was super busy, like when we had times like that, you know, mm -hmm. and so I, I do that a lot and I buy him like little, little funny stuffies and things here and there. And we, <laughs> you know, we just do stuff together. You know, it's like we do stuff that we, you know, like we go to the play place at the mall or we go to the playground and, mm -hmm. and we just try to like. But, you know, we try to do things that we enjoy together. And so it's been, that's been really fun is like kind of having those, those times where we just go out and we have fun and we, or we or watch a movie together. Yeah. Or think, I mean, there's simple things like that, but those are little things that I remember that really just got me to connect with my mom, you know, so, that's awesome. you know, or have treats for them when they get out of school oh or, you know, you things like that. make them like little that. cookies? Yeah. Or <laughs> I'll buy them like cookies or like a candy bar like Aww. little candies mini miniature candies or something silly but yeah we know <laughs> but you know a lot of that um um there was a big time where their parents weren't around a lot during the, uh, those years as well where you know i had a lot of uh, nannies and, and things like that so i don't get them as nannies ever because i think i grew up with so many that i'm kind of adverted to that um but yeah and you know you learn also a lot of what like I'm more present than either one of my parents were ever, you know, with my kids. And so that's exciting too, Aww. you know. And they're also like the cutest though, you know, but that's they're super easy adorable. to be around. <laughs> oh yeah, they're super adorable. I mean, I want to die when I go to bed usually because they're just worn me out so much, but, um, but they're, pretty, they're pretty great. <laughs> Aw, that's very cute. Yeah, I like, um, they, they have really cute style. Like mini style is very cute. They're yeah. Just, so she's cute. so girly yeah she's so girly you know and she just that's so great Aww. you know she just loves everything girly stuff and it's just really fun so, they're both just so much fun so cute oh my god okay um one of the other questions which we pretty much already discussed was what does jay believe the film misrepresented the most about his parents and uh but I feel, uh, like yeah. we, I feel like we've kind of gone yeah, through that. Yeah, we kind of went through that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, one of the things is like, I, one of the things I didn't mention, I guess we can throw this in, is like when like they have my mom looking at fur coats with her mom and mm -hmm. she's like, her grandmother, like, can we afford this? And she's like, well, donations are coming yeah. in. My parents would have never said okay. anything like that. <laughs> like yeah. they're, they had a, a pay that they were paid on payroll that was voted on by board of directors. You know, it wasn't like they had like some like bank account that they could just go into. <laughs> right. You know, it wasn't like that. You okay. know? Um, so, you know, my parents, were, 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 they didn't like stuff like that. You know, they didn't like that. I mean, 
my parents actually gave twice as much that they made from Heritage back because all of the all the royalties for my mom's albums, my dad's books, my dad's sermons, any any books that my dad wrote, any albums that my mom recorded, all their their royalties went back to the church. They didn't take the royalties. And they made I think that last four years, I think they made like eight million dollars in royalties. And so they gave back like three to four times back to the church than than what they made. So they actually just made, ended up making like a, a quarter, not even half of that. And, you know, if if I would have been them, I would have been like, you know what, you don't have to pay me. I'll just take all my royalties, you know, and had twice as much money. So it's it's funny the little things like that that people don't know about or realize or care to know or care to report about because it's not, you know, oh. Not juicy. Hey, yeah, they actually gave more money back than they made. Oh, Aww. shit. What do we do with that? Ugh, wow. That was cute. I do have to ask, the story with your grandmother in it, was that pretty pretty right on? Cause... You know, my grandmother was more quiet. Okay. It needed an ag- ag- antagonist right. for the film. And I think she kind of acted as maybe in some way as the public view. Um, but no, my grandmother was very, I didn't know her very well. Even though she lived around us, she was a very quiet woman. And, and kept to herself. So, um, but I'm getting to know some people. So, no, I, I, my grandmother, I think, was a lot more supportive of my mom than that. Awesome. It, it kind, her role kind of reminded me of the, the dad role in Walk the Line. Yeah. Walk, it had yeah. that feeling. But it wasn't like, not like they were a bad character, but they were just that one that kind of was like, hmm. Like There's made definitely it feel a, a biopic heavy. formula that they, <laughs> they, they, they use yeah. in the film, you know? Totally. Aww. I mean, have you ever noticed people in, in films always take pills without water? Yeah, how do they do that? That made my throat scratchy. It's so dramatic. <laughs> and like, had my yeah. mom tried to take a pill without water, I mean, my mom thought she would choke on a piece of rice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, she would have been like, ah! It would have been like, turned into a comedy really fast. So, yeah. But oh I love God. it that like, like, that's like a drama thing in movies. Like, if they start taking pills without water, oh. Oh, yeah, I think shit's <laughs> about to get real. You know, it's like when somebody coughs in a movie, you uh-huh. know, they're going to be like dead or really sick in a yeah. few hours, you know, in a few minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. I didn't even think about that, but she did. She took all her pills without yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, that she should have followed that with a big slurp of diet. Uh huh. Yep. I love the oh. old cans that they had. Like the old. Yeah, that was really cool. That's fun. Oh, man. That's hilarious. Okay. Um, the third one, it says, this is Lucy. That last one who said that, I don't know his real name. His real name oh, okay. is That's Grind right. Set PHX. So, oh, yeah. Hello. From the future. <laughs> this one's from someone named Lucy, and she said, besides worrying about other Christians, how did your mom react to you being gay affirming? She was supportive. Besides, yeah. the way she did, she said she was worried about how other Christians would treat me and what they would say and that they would, that it would destroy me. She did. I mean, she's like, they'll, they'll try to destroy you. And it's funny that she was so worried about what Christians were going to do to me. And I guess she was just trying to be protective mother. Um, but she said, I, I'm glad that you're following your, your convictions, you know? And she was, she was there when things started falling apart. You know, I'm like, oh, mom, they've canceled everything I've done. You know, and she, you know, she was just, I think it made her sad. I think it made her sad to think that, you know, when will, will the church, when will the church learn? You know, when will they stop killing people who think differently? When will they stop destroying their own people? You know, and um, because I think she was, I think her and my dad were both at that time very proud of where I had brought my career, you know, and like, oh, he's a book. He's speaking at all these events. People, you know, I mean, you know, I remember my dad being like someone, you know, said, oh, you're, you're Jay's dad to me once. He's like, I was so proud of that, you know, because it wasn't, I wasn't your dad. You were my, I was your, you know, I was your dad, not the other way around, you know? And I was like, yeah, that's really cool. You know? And I think it was kind of hard for them to, they, to to see that happen, you know, to see me go back into the obscure yeah. <laughs> when they thought like I, maybe I was going to be, I don't know, maybe in some ways they thought maybe I was going to redeem the Baker name or Aww. something. I don't know. <laughs> and of course I'm like, well, no, I'm a Baker. So I have to do something that's <laughs> controversial and weird. You know? <laughs> Man, I love that. Yeah. I, it, it's fun to imagine like what, 
like if your mom was still around, how, what her relationship with Revolution would be. Like, yeah, you know, she did speak at Revolution oh, a couple of times. That's fun. And she one time did a really cool thing where we she spoke at this. We did, we met in a bar um, called. Uh, it was a club. It was a bar and a club, and it was called the Masquerade. And she spoke upstairs, and she, we had she like brought some of her stuff, and we auctioned it off for the church. Uh-huh. So she like brought some shoes and some Aww. makeup that she had used and things like that. And then she did like a, uh, a funny because you know back then to get instant photos you had to have like a Polaroid. So she had a Polaroid, <laughs> and then for like ten bucks she took a picture with her and she autographed it, and Aww. you could donate ten bucks to the church. So she came and did a fundraiser for us once, and that was really great. It was really, really cool. That's awesome. And, um, yeah, so, uh-huh. yeah, she 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 liked what, you know, she believed in what we were doing and liked what we were doing. And, um, you know, honestly, I wonder, like, if she had not come out completely in support, though, I always wonder if, like, the woke people would have attacked her for not being affirming enough, you know. And that's the sad thing is, is that, like, that it's become that. Like, to me, like, that's a pure example of, like, when did the progressives become, like, the conservative Christians and have so many freaking rules and regulations of what you, like, we can't respect each other's journeys or that we're from, you know, what it's like to come from a different world or a different custom. But anyway, you know, because, I mean, I remember hearing once that, like, like um, Shane Claiborne got protested at Wild Goose Festival, you know, I'm like, they're he's at the festival and people at the festival are protesting in the festival. I'm like, that sounds oh so gosh. weird to me. I'm like, thank God that never happened to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was oh, just God. like, wow, this is who we are. We just, we always become known for what we're against, even though we, we always assume that it's because of who we're supporting, but we don't realize that it just makes us look like people who are unable to have adult mm. conversations. Yeah. Unfortunately, Ugh. man. So there you go. Yeah. It just like I don't know. I'm just like wow. I'm just so curious what she would have ended up being like, like her style. I'm like, Ooh. Yeah. I'm... Well, she always had like things she went through, yeah. like colors she would like uh-huh. and gravitate towards, or certain wigs, oh. you know. So she had different fashion seasons that she would kind of go through. I remember once she was really into like neon green. Ooh. You know, like a neon green and Kelly green were like nice. the thing, and so everything. <laughs> Had to have that tied into it, you know. Aww. Um, yeah. Or like the certain wig that she liked that kinda had like a do rag almost. Not uh-huh. like a do- you know, like the little remember the sleeves that people used to cut off a sleeve and the girls would, or guys would wear them around their heads. Uh you know. So she had I don't know, like her hair came out the back, basically. Like just like a wrap around her uh-huh. hair. And um I'm thinking that sleeve thing was a little bit before your time. <laughs> um <laughs> The skater thing, really. But oh, yeah, okay. so my mom was really into that for a while with her wigs. And anyway, she's had a lot of different styles. That's but fun. She was like Moira Rose from Shit's Creek. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Moira's awesome, too. She was a real-life character. I'd be about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow, we did a two-hour conversation. So. I know. This isn't fun, though. And again, I am, yeah. I am so happy that I'm your friend. And if anybody listening yeah, me messes too. with you from this point on, I will break your legs. <laughs> just kidding what would tammy faye do she wouldn't break that's people's true. legs but she'll think no. about it in her heart a lot she will but and that's what i'll be doing always, <laughs> she always finds a peaceful she always found a peaceful way to yeah. deal with it oh god man yeah this is fun <sighs> i got i feel like I, I got like the anxiety like the good anxiety i got, I got all riled up again talking about it something about, ah. it really got to me that story yeah i um if i feel like my 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 mental health right now has kind of got me comatose. Yeah. But oh. I, I, it, it is good to talk about it and get it out there and, and deal with it. Oh, well, thank you again. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to the Christy G podcast. For more information, you can follow me over on Instagram at Christy G or head over to Christy G.com. A special thanks to Chris Caraba for providing the official podcast music. And y'all have an amazing, amazing day.
Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this podcast. To make your 100% tax-deductible donation today, please visit revolutionchurch.com slash donate. You can also learn more by clicking the donate section on the website.